Right, hey guys. Um, so Figma has released this cool new feature at that new um, the, the conference they had, um, Config 2023, um, and they've you know mind blowingly changed this product now to um, be a bit better prototyping tool, um, introducing wearables, some advanced wearables, you know, um, and some conditional prototyping um, uh, using different expressions and, and, and so on. Um, so now you can do if true, if false, um, true, you know, uh, save string to a wearable and etc. Um, although at the moment you can't tap into an input box, which is something that will be good to have. Um, but it's getting there, it's getting there. So so within our industry, GDS, if you work on G GDS projects, I work on GDS projects, I think something like this can be very helpful to design really quick prototypes rather than having to jump in a, you know, uh, Visual Studio code and, and so on. Um, so what I've done here is um, I've created a, a conditional type of a conditional type prototype basically. So if I selected this checkbox, selected this checkbox, and selected this checkbox, something happens on the following screen. In this case, check your answers page would show relevant selection based on this. So if I just hit play on this, um, give you a quick demo, and then I'll walk through how I achieved it, um, so you can try it out for yourself. Um, so for example, uh, let's select waste uh, from animal carcasses um, in this and continue you can see that that selection was made um, if I go and change this answer you can see that it's still there um, if I select all three um, save and continue you can see all three appear if I go and change one of them uh, you can see that it disappears um, so this is pretty cool you can do pretty good quick prototyping send it for user tests um, and pretty much behaves like it should um, if you were to code this um, so it might take you some time to code, some people don't like coding, so this could be very helpful for those people. If I save and continue, um, uh, in this case you wouldn't really go to another question page for me to check your answers really, but uh, for this demo purposes we have, so in this now, um, got another radio button question here, so you know, as you can imagine we do within GDS prototyping, uh, we do a lot of yes and no questions. So you may want to direct someone from yes to another question, uh, or, or you wanna you want them to if you select no, then you go to another question. Um, in this case, for example, if I selected England, then I I want to go to a specific page to do with you know I don't know England. So in this saving continue, it will ask me how long have you lived in England. Um, if I go back, um, so there's one of these there is a, a sort of limitations to this with the radio buttons you can't select uh, multiple radio buttons um, obviously that acts like a checkbox now so in this case that is you can you have to ignore this feature basically because uh, there's no at the moment at least I haven't figured out a way to sort of uncheck that um, because you, with the radio buttons you can only check one option so anyway so let's just pretend that I've checked this and rest have been unchecked automatically um, Scotland uh, you can see that the question changes um, to be specific for Scotland so you can see you can create conditional journeys you can create different routing based on the selection that we've made um, so in code we would be obviously storing these values and then doing some conditional routing based on that um, so anyways, um, going back to how I managed to achieve this is via the conditional um, root, uh, prototyping and, and wearables. So what I'm doing here is I've got the GDS kit open here. What I've done is I've hooked this uh, prototype, these components from the GDS kit. I've got a copy of the GDS kit here, so which I'm using locally. Um, what I've done is I've hooked it. If it's already got uh, different variants. So what I've done is I've hooked it to, you know, if on clicking, I want it to change to different variant and then on clicking that what changes back to that variant so um, you can see mouse down mouse up clicks etc um, it just checks true and false basically um, and then same with radio buttons so if I go to the radio buttons here um, if you click it then checks it and makes it true um, and vice versa um, it should never be false really but you understand the tr struggles here but something is happening again um, so if I go back now 
and I'm using that radio checkbox option from the GDSK here um, and what you would usually see is you'd, you usually see a, a, a option to turn it on and off here um, the variant on and off um, but instead now you can hook it to a wearable so wearables are these things that can capture the value of whatever's happening in here so what I've done is if you just uh, click out of the area um, you can open up these local wearables right but uh, bear in mind this is only available for paid plans um, and enterprise uh, sort of plans as well so I'm just, just testing this in the educational version of the Figma uh, so it's also available in educational version so if you're using if you want to learn it for educational purposes if you can get a manager to approve this as a paid license then great then you can use this um, cool feature basically um, or you can stick to the code prototyping um, so what I've got here is I've got uh, a wearable collection here so in within so collection is sort of in the way I imagine collection is you can uh, have pages and each page has different wearables so you can sort of create a collection of that um, so in this case I've got collection here and I've got the wearables here right so what I've done is each of this radio options I've made it into a, a sort of a name and wearable um, this in this case you can create these different type of variables in this case it's because it's a checkbox it's always going to be true or false um, uh, so I've just created these uh, and to false um, again and then for radio buttons as well uh, where do you live I've created another collection where do you live uh, and again added boolean variables here England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland and, and obviously they're all false by default um, as you'd expect when you enter the page um, and then what you do is uh, you then for example currently default state would be checked um, and it would be it would look like this basically uh, and then what you want to do is you want to assign a wearable to that so in this case I'm gonna assign um, uh, waste from animal carcasses here so this is the wearable I created so I'm gonna assign it so what happens is overrides the default wearable um, but it has to be true or false if it's not true or false then it wouldn't work right so in this case it's because it's true or false what happens is it, it sort of overrides and now this animal carcass variable true and false is being controlled by you clicking on this so if you leave it then it's false if you click it then it's true right so um, and I've done that for all of these um, you can also do that for this as well England uh, so this is what it would look like if it wasn't so this is what it would look like so if I then assign a wearable I've assigned Scotland to it um, so they're all currently false um, if they were true then obviously that's what it would it wouldn't look like this basically um, but now this you can only interact with this in the prototype mode um, so if I open this up now um, you can see um, you can interact with it now what it's doing in the background is, is that wearable is being changed based on the select clicking that you do um, and then now what you can do is based you can assign some condition here so usually what we'll do in the prototyping is we would open that root file um, and assign some sort of conditional routing grab it from the session and, and, and do some clever magic to try and take it to the whichever page we want it to go to however in Figma it's really easy right so you want to do is click on prototype what you want to do is you want to on click you want it to go to this page right so in this case what happens is um, comes to this page right this is the uh, uh, show and hide sort of variables so in here what I've got is I've got three layers T potential answers right you could have so it's waste from animals waste from queries and waste from minds of queries or waste from what well, should be agricultural so it should be that but yeah, I named it correctly so I just name it here so about that uh, yeah, so waste from that rate really. Uh, yeah, you know, you get the gist. Anyway, if I go back here, what I've done is I've done I've 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 mapped the visibility so a a layer can be visible or um, invisible, right? So that's like true and false. So you can do you can do the same case here. So what you can do is if I detach this, right? Um, I can see what it looks like but what you can do is you can map it to to be based on the selection you made so if um, animal carcass was selected and it was true then display this otherwise don't display it. so this is, I've selected 
um, because it's false by default it won't show until you make it true on the prototyping so when in our case here when we go from here to here you can see that it's true it's displaying as vis it's visible because you made it visible um, same with the others um, and if you go back in and select it it's now not visible because it's false so it, it wouldn't it will disappear um, so we're also using uh, you know the the auto layout here so that depending on which one is visible it will shift it up um, or down right so in this case vertical layout so uh, that one's interesting uh, even more interesting now is when we do the routing stuff right so in this case if I've made England as a selection I want it to route to the England page right so in this case I have a uh, few pages here England Scotland Wales or Northern Ireland you can do you can you can do some clever stuff here in future as well where you can only have one page and everything is dynamic based on that one page of then the selection you make on the last page and so on right so you can get it so if you select this um, then this can this bit of the string can be the text variable and so based on selection it changes to that particular text variable you can do that so uh, but for this case I've just kept a simple maybe I'll bring up another video uh, um, and cover something like that um, uh, so in this case what I've done is on save and continue what I've done is on click I wanted to do uh, on click I wanted to do some sort of condition so you can do is uh, you can press this button here and you can set a condition so if a condition is true then I wanted to navigate to that particular page so um, what I've done here is I've added those conditions so if I just take one out and show you how to add the condition in so if you press that press add a condition in and the condition to be select the variable right so I, I want uh, Northern Ireland to equal to true right uh, and then press enter and then what you want to do is add action so add in this case action would be I want it to navigate to um, Northern Ireland page right so that's that's a condition now added so when that button is true then it will get, navigate to that page if the other ones is true then it will navigate to that page and so on right so um, uh, there's a bit of limitation obviously we can't uncheck we can only have we can we can at the moment there's a little I guess it's a bug you can pretty much select all of them and acts like a check radio button but uh, when you're doing user research just make sure they only select one for example um, otherwise it won't work properly um, um, so yeah, um, that is sort of the end of the video, um, quick and simple, um, hopefully that's helpful.